Okay, if you have your Bibles there, if you'd like to open up again to Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to start from verse 14. You may remember we started yesterday by looking at the days of creation. And because we're looking at geology, we're not getting into astronomy and we're not getting into many other things. But we're looking at the implications that Genesis 1 has for the geologist along the, the theme that geology actually grew out of the Christian view of theology. In fact, most of the early geologists were clergymen. Uh, it's a point I can't stress enough because it seems to have dropped out of most of David Attenborough's programs and it seems to have dropped out of the natural history displays and it's not in the textbooks anymore. Um, Genesis chapter 1, beginning at verse 14. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now to sort of try and give you a picture to remind you where we've gotten to, and to uh, add what's new this morning. Well, I'll make just a minor adjustment there. We've added names like sun and moon. Did you notice in Genesis it doesn't name them? It's interesting because uh, there are many things in the Bible that God records as he names them and there are some things which we obviously have the freedom to name ourselves. It seems to be an exercise in dominion. So when God makes the animals later on, he actually brings them to Adam to name them. And Adam has therefore authority over these creatures. So naming is an interesting picture in the Bible. And the sun and moon at the present time in Genesis have no names whatsoever. Just a greater light and a lesser light. But we're not into outer space astronomy today. We're trying to deal with planet Earth, which if you remember, on day one was created covered with water. On day two, the waters below were divided from the waters above and a space was put in between. On day three, the water which covered the earth was gathered into one place and the dry land appeared with created soil and the possibility of massive quantities of non-fossil bearing sediment that had never been exposed to the air. By the end of day three, you have vegetation in which there is that little phrase, which I said yesterday, appears ten times in Genesis. Does anyone remember what it was? After their own kind. Okay, which is the first clue. Most people don't appreciate the fact that when man set out to try and invent a system of labelling that would work, we frustrated ourselves for thousands of years because we didn't start in the right place. Some of you have heard the word asparagus, correct? That's a word that's thousands of years old when the ancient Greeks and, 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 and the people tried to come up with a labelling system. Of course, the first classification will occur a little bit later in Genesis when Adam names the animals. But you see, we lost track of most of that. And by the time you get up to the first century AD, the second century AD, we've got local names for local things. And if you were trying to talk to somebody in Spain about a frog, they would have their name for it, you would have your name for it, and the whole system degenerated into a mess until you get up to people like John Ray and Carl von Linn who are actually using God's glasses to see the world. And Carl von Linn particularly said, if it is true that God has created creatures to produce their own kind, then they are separate. They are able to be labelled, like library books. There will be a section on history, but in the section on history, there will be a separate section on British history, a separate section on Australian history. So it should be able to possible to lump the things according to what they've got in common and separate them according to their differences. So if you add up what they've got in common, subtract what they've got in differences, they should end up in little bundles. And so Carl von Linn um, invented the classification system. Linnaeus is what his name is most of the time. That's his Latinized version. And we call the basic entity of those names, does anyone remember what we call them? It starts with an S. Species. Species as in special creation. And they don't put that in the biology books. 
You see, the whole concept of classification, which we even use in geology, has a Christian creation base. We believe in special creation, said Carl von Linn. So the smallest entity, borrowed the word from ancient Greeks, the smallest entity would be something that was special, something that was by itself.